Hey, Tom Brown from Tiger Martial Arts here. I just finished up a private lesson and I wanted to take a couple moments to, to shoot you guys a quick video. This is going to be the first video in a new series. We're going to start exploring some of the principles behind running a successful martial arts school. And now you, you might be asking why, why is it that we're starting this new series? And the answer is twofold. Um, one, I, I'm a teacher. I love teaching anything I'm passionate about and this is certainly one of the subject matters that I'm pretty passionate about. But uh, two, Recently, we've started a second location, and that's really got my mind going. That's what kind of gave birth to this idea, is I started thinking about all the different principles involved with building and, and growing, starting up a new program and making it successful. And now, certainly, these same principles are at hand with maintaining a successful school and continuing to grow and expand your school. So this series, as we go forward, is going to be great, whether you're just you know, thinking about starting a school, maybe you're, you're already getting ready to start your school, or you've been in business for, for several years. And in this series, I want to debunk certain myths. So today, what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the basic business model that's involved here. This is going to be real basic, common sense stuff. This isn't going to be a very technical series, but I, I think it is going to provide a lot of value for you guys. Um, and so we're going to look at the basic business model that's involved, and we're going to look at a very commonly held myth that uh, I think a lot of schools believe that you need to use contracts. That's uh, pretty common in the industry nowadays. And I want to look at why it, certainly you can use contracts, and I know schools that are doing so successfully and with integrity, but I want to look at why you really don't need to if you do things correctly. So let's get started. The first uh, the, the basic business model, real simple. I said this isn't going to be technical. What we're dealing with, it's a service industry. We're providing a service, and it's built around recurring revenue. Okay, we want to make sure we build a membership up, essentially, and we can generate recurring revenue month to month or every eight weeks, however it is you set up your, your payment plan. So the first step to that, of course, is get people enrolled. Like I said, common sense. And there's some marketing that's involved here, and we'll come back to that. That's not going to be the main focus of this video. We're going to talk about it a little bit, and you'll actually see how the second side of the equation fits in with this. And it's really important to understand this side. Both are important. We are going to look at this, just not so much today. So the second side, of course, once you get people enrolled, once you make people aware that you're in business, that you have a service uh, that can provide value, you get people in the door, you, you end up getting them to sign up. Now, what do you need to do? Well, you need to keep people enrolled. You want to basically, you want to minimize your attrition and maximize your attention. Okay? So we want to keep people enrolled. Now, there's different methods you could use. One method is well, once they get in, you could have them sign a contract. Then you don't really have to worry too much. If, if they stop attending classes, the money keeps coming in. And that is an advantage for a lot of people in terms of implementing contracts. But it's really not necessary. If you do things correctly, if you pay attention to the fundamental tenets that are involved here, that are at the core of running a successful martial arts school, if you do what I'm about to describe correctly, you're going to see you really don't need contracts. And I've been in business for 12 years. We've maintained an active enrollment of over 100 students for many years. I have an incredibly high retention rate, and I've never used contracts. I worked with my instructor before that uh, for, for several years, helping him run his school and, and pro, different satellite programs for a school that we built up that were, were successful. And we didn't use contracts. So what are the tenants? Let's dive into this. The first, the, the basic principle, the fundamental principle here that everything revolves around is you have to provide value. Not convince people you're providing value. That's what some people focus on. You have to actually provide value. What you have to offer has to be valuable. So that's, that's the first part of this. It's the what. You have to look at what are you teaching? What are some additional services perhaps that you provide to supplement, to complement what you're teaching? So the what matters. But the next part, and you've probably guessed it, matters just as much because you can have a, a, a very valuable system or curriculum that you're teaching. But the how is just important. How are you teaching? How are you presenting that value? 
That's what's going to be able to allow you to connect with your students. And that's the key. If, if you know that what you have is valuable, but you can't communicate it in a way that connects with your audience, you're not speaking their language, you're not going to be able to build up your enrollment or maintain your student base. So how do we make sure? What is involved here? Well, there's two things that you have to give to your students. The first is you have to give them a sense of direction. And actually implicit here is you have to let them know what direction you're going to take them. That's part of the marketing is understand what it is that you offer. Understand that what you have is valuable, but make sure you clearly indicate how what it is you're offering can benefit your students. Make sure it connects with them. If you find a student that it doesn't connect with, that maybe that's not the direction that they want to head, well, I've had this happen. Students, people have contacted me looking for particular things that really we don't provide, and I've made the effort to find schools. This has happened uh, at least a couple times since I've been in business. I've given them a recommendation of where they can go to find what it is they are looking for. Don't try to convince people that what you have is what they want. Find the people that what you have is what they want. That's your job. So be clear on what the value is you offer. Be clear on the direction that you can take people. And then most importantly, in your teaching methods, make sure that you can give your students a sense of direction, that they feel that they're moving in the direction that they want to go. Clearly indicate to your students where they are, where they were, and where they're headed. That's critical to your success as a teacher and to your success uh, as a martial arts school owner and operator. So that's the first thing you have to give. The second thing involves understanding the nature of a classroom. A classroom is a community. So you have to give your students a sense of belonging as well. They have to feel that they're a part of something. That community component is, is critical to teaching. Uh, so you have to establish a clear set of values and, and sense of uh, the environment, the culture of your school. Some students might be looking for, for what it is that we teach, but maybe the manner in which we teach it also doesn't fit in with them. So be clear on what that environment is, what that culture is, and help your students understand how you can take them where they want to go and how they can fit in with the community that's also trying to head in a similar direction. Now, we haven't talked about this side, and we're not going to get into too, too much uh, in terms of the principles involved in marketing today, but I do want to introduce you to two basic concepts of marketing. And now, the first is called push marketing. This is basically the interruption method of marketing. This could be a commercial that comes on while you're watching your favorite TV show. You get interrupted. You see that message again and again. It creates brand awareness. Uh, perhaps it creates a call to action and some tension and sense of urgency to get you to act. This is a part of marketing. This is valuable to learn. We'll get into it. But there's another type of marketing that if you master this, in fact, if you master this, you're actually starting to develop this second type of marketing, which is called pull marketing. This is like a magnet. What it is, the value you're providing in the changes based on the direction you're taking your students, the changes that they're experiencing are so apparent, so clear to perhaps other parents who, who see their friend's kids that are in your program and they see the development in terms of the discipline and, and the coordination and all the, the benefits and values that martial arts provides. They see that and they're drawn to your school because they want that same thing for their kids. The adults that their friends can see how they're getting in better shape and the confidence and, and uh, the skills that they're learning. They see it. They want to be a part of it. That's pull marketing. There are things you can do even when you're starting out to implement pull marketing. There's marketing methods where you're combining a little bit of the two of these. This is incredibly powerful. And the start of this is getting clear on everything that's going on here. Now, I said at the beginning, this isn't going to be overly technical. There's a lot of stuff that's common sense that you're probably going, yeah, I know that, I know that. But what's important is to go back over all of these things and reflect on it. If you're struggling, if you've been running a school and you're struggling with your attention, 
you have to start diving into this. You have to start asking the simple questions. Is what you're providing still valuable, still pertinent? Are there changes you can make if you're willing to make them? Is, perhaps it's not an issue with what, maybe you know it's valuable. Has anything changed? Is how you're providing it? As the world changes, the how has to evolve as well. So is how you're providing your service still up to date? Is, is there anything you can do to increase your connection with your students and your communication skills and your ability to foster a sense of community within your school and that sense of belonging? You have to look at these simple things because it's these simple things that when you master them, uh, they're going to lead to incredible success in your business. Now, we are going to come back with future videos in this series, but before we do, I'd like to hear from you. Now, you can leave a comment, although that's not always the best place to, to contact me. Sometimes I don't receive notifications um, when people comment on videos, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, so the best thing that you can do, if you're willing to do it, and I encourage you to do so, I want to tailor this video series to meet your needs, to try to provide as much value as I can for you. So I'd love it if you could send me an email. You can email me directly at tom at tigonkarate.com and let me know what area of focus do you want us to go into? What is it that you're struggling with the most? And, and we'll try to, as I said, tailor this series to fit your needs. So I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.